Fat is flavour. Don't throw fat away. Fat's good. Yo, what up? Welcome to Paul TV. Man, what I really want to know is whether you can feed me. Man, that's easy. We got you covered, no trouble. Cooks twice the food and they call them C double. On another level, look at how he's raising the steaks. How he spins the vinyl while he's baking the cake. Take a seat, because they told me this is one for the books. Must be something on the menu. That's cool. Yeah, Whatever. You've had a big night. First thing you need to do is get the coffee on. If you don't have a cafetiera, make sure you buy one. There's nothing better than real Italian espresso after a big night out. So what we're going to make today is a traditional North African breakfast dish, shakshuka. It's essentially bacon and eggs, but a little bit more special, a little bit more fancy. And it's something that'll really impress your friends and bring them back from the dead. These are the things that you chuck in the pot. The final chapter till you're done with a lot. Was that subliminal, man? One medium brown onion, 250 grams of Italian flat pancetta, a little bit of saffron, five cloves of real Italian garlic, two red capsicums, dropping shit everywhere, eight eggs, we've got smoked and a mild paprika, cayenne pepper for a little bit of extra heat, and cumin seeds. Oh shit. And of course, 800 grams of Italian cherry tomatoes. I use cherry tomatoes because they're a little bit sweeter. You can use Italian diced tomatoes, plum tomatoes, whatever you've got on hand. Word up, yo, here's how you make it. Here's what you need to do before you taste, before it. You taste it. Well, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fry the pancetta in a hot pan with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. In a traditional shakshuka, you wouldn't use bacon. Of course, no pork, um, but we're in Australia. Bacon and eggs, you're a little bit hungover. All right, so now I'm just going to dice the onion. Rough and ready, it's shakshuka. This is true peasant food. You're hungover. Don't try and get too serious with the knife. When you're cooking, make sure you have ample surface space. Get all your ingredients ready beforehand. There's nothing worse than trying to run around while you've got things on the stove burning. Uh, you never know. It's like, you know, some people are not very good at managing time and that kind of thing. You know, you put something, on, you put something, you put something on the stove and then you forget that you've got it there. Working in kitchens, no one ever cooks for you unless you go out to a restaurant. Generally, people find it pretty intimidating when they have to cook for you. I wouldn't say that I volunteer to cook, but it's kind of expected at this point. So I'm just going to give the pancetta a bit of a stir. Unfortunately, you guys at home can't smell it, but it's starting to smell nice now. So I've got my capsicum, my onion, my garlic, nice and diced over there. I'm going to add a little bit of chili. Wouldn't be an Italian household without some dried chili. So the pancetta's got some nice colour. I'm just going to add everything in here. And I'm going to let that cook for about five minutes. We don't really want to colour the onion, we just want to let it cook down a little bit, get that sweetness happening, and then we'll add our spices. You can see it's starting to change colour a little bit now. Some of the fat from the pancetta is melting away. It's a little bit impressive as well, you know. You got your mates all still asleep, you start cooking and they start smelling the pancetta and the onions and the capsicum. It wakes people up. The worst hangover I've ever had. Generally the hangover comes later in the afternoon for me. Uh, we had Doshio before us a couple years ago. Um, that was a big night at the bakery. They kicked us out of the bakery indefinitely after that party. They said we'd never ever throw a party there ever again. All of us passed out in front of the gate and only woke up because they were doing the final boarding call. I woke up and said, oh, what's going on? Final boarding call for flight to Melbourne, da 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 da. We had to wake everyone up. Man, we're going to miss the flight, you're going to miss the flight. We're going to have to buy you another flight. Jesus Christ, man. We're going to add, start adding the spices and we'll let them fry a little bit as well to develop some flavour. So we've got mild ground paprika. This has a little bit of heat. And you probably want about a tablespoon of mild paprika. Not as much cayenne pepper, because this packs quite a bit of punch. A teaspoon of cayenne pepper. At the end of the day, you do it, do it to taste. You know, it's like, there's no right or wrong way of doing things unless you're baking, which is more of a science than an art form. You know, if you like the flavor of one particular herb more than another, go nuts, you know. It's an art form. Kitchen essentials. Uh, for me, it's a good chopping board, a good knife, and a couple of good pans. That's all you really need. Once you have that, then you can start, you can keep adding to the collection of utensils and uh, bits and pieces that you have. 
And so again, about a tablespoon of cumin. Maybe a little bit more. And now something a little bit special. I've got a little bit of saffron here that I've just steeped in water to help release the flavor. And that'll give it that rich saffron color. And a little bit of delicate flavor as well. That's starting to smell nice, so I'm gonna add around 800 grams of Italian cherry tomatoes. Once again, I like to use the cherry tomatoes because they're a little bit sweeter. You know, everyone has their preference. If you don't like it a bit, if you don't like it sweet, just go for Italian diced tomatoes. But I think Italian cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes look nice as well. You know, you get that nice big chunk of tomato. Everything in this dish is cheap, which is always good. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of water as well. Then this has to cook for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, at this point, you season to taste with salt, pepper. Another tip. Listen up, bro, because they double never lies. Never Tips so dope, call the words to the wise. When you're cooking, always taste. Taste as you go. Taste is right. Still not quite sweet enough for me, so I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. It's that Italian thing coming out of me. The sugar also helps to cut the acidity in the tomatoes, so it's important. This is when things start to smell really good. Your friends are all waking up, you know. They start coming in from wherever they've passed out the night before. So man, what are you cooking, what are you cooking? All right, so this is gonna cook for about 15, 20 minutes. As it cooks, the flavors are gonna intensify, but at the moment it's already tasting pretty good. All right, so I've transferred that to a lower heat and it's been simmering for about 15, 20 minutes now. We're at the most important part of this dish, the eggs. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a little well in the sauce and we're just gonna crack the eggs into there. You kinda wanna make sure that you don't break the yolk. So be careful when you do this. Yeah, you just wanna create a little bit of a well so that the egg sits in there and it cooks more evenly. Then once we've got the eggs in there, we're just gonna cover it and let it cook for a further 10 minutes or until the eggs are cooked to your liking. Some people like the yolk a bit runny, some people like it a bit harder. Once again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You know what, seven's all right. Seven's all right in there. Don't overcrowd it. Don't overcrowd. Now we're just gonna cover it and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Um, and then it's ready to go. You're finally here. Even players gotta eat. Up. Enjoy your meal, yo. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Yeah. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> At all times. Oh, I'm really bad in like, 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 like